This would be real good yeah. for the San Antonio Spurs. Not so much for the Toronto Raptors. It's about narratives. It's not about the best player because the best player hadn't won the MVP in a very long time. I don't think T.O. looks as bad as the Hall of Fame this weekend. This would make no sense to me, Skip. With no assurances that Kawhi Leonard would re-sign and you give up the centerpiece, which would be DeMar DeRozan, and maybe a Nunaby, and maybe Pirtle. Mm -hmm. Skip, this makes no sense. I believe, Skip, at the end of the day, this is why Philly and, and, and Boston and all these other teams, other than the Lakers, mm -hmm. I believe this is why they're hesitant. Yeah. Because he's not giving them reassurances that he would re-sign. I like those three pieces. Right. You could take those three. These are win-now pieces. Right. As opposed to, let's just do the hypothetical. I know this has been kicked around. But the Lakers, you know, if they give Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and Josh Hart, and I'm falling in love with Josh Hart in the summer league because right. he is a man among kids at the, in Las Vegas. As a longtime Spurs fan, I am also, I'm shocked by this, <laughs> but, but I am pleasantly shocked. If this is really on the table, I'm good with it. Yeah. This, this would be real good yeah. for the San Antonio Spurs. Not so much for the Toronto Raptors. Right. You can squint and say, oh, would the Raptors do that move? If they thought, what percent chance would the Raptors need to believe they could keep Kawhi Leonard in order to do that move? And you could even argue, would the Raptors do that move even if they knew they couldn't keep Kawhi? Because privately, maybe they would like the idea of getting off DeRozan's money, of being able to start anew, of being able to start fresh. Kawhi can be traded anywhere. Like any team, yeah, so it's, is it a possibility? But nothing's changed from Kawhi's side as far as from these standpoints. He still wants to go to Los Angeles, and he's still not interested in being rented out for one season. I think the Lakers should go after him, and I think they should go after him now. I think he would be an incredible asset now having LeBron James. Of course, there's discussion about what they would be willing to give up, who they would be willing to give up, their top assets. Brandon Ingram, to me, is tops on that list. Kawhi Leonard is doing something I really like. Now, fans in San Antonio are ticked. But if he's successful, it's going to change this league. He comes out with a year left and says, I will play for the Lakers. By making it public through his people, what general manager is going to give away anything to rent him for a year? I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up elite players and draft picks knowing he's kind of a different cat to begin with and he wants to be a Laker. This is what we know about the MVP voting. It's about narratives. It's not about the best player because the best player hadn't won the MVP in a very long time. LeBron James comes to a once Still story franchise, mm -hmm. but they're going through the ref, uh, the worst stretch of basketball they've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. He comes. Yep. He's LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Restores order. Mm. That's an MVP narrative. Mm. That's what's going to happen. Mm. You know that, I know that. Even you can't disagree. On this, I completely agree with you. <laughs> LeBron should be the prohibitive favorite to be the runaway MVP next year. And I think he processed this very quickly. He's thinking legacy. He's thinking, I need to win an MVP in my 16th season because nobody has ever won an MVP this late. late in their career. Where are most guys in year 16? Rich Paul made the point, either out of the league, commentators are saying, I wish he'd retire. Like he's kind of, you know, he's, he's tarnishing how I want to remember him. Or they are taking a much lesser role as a complimentary player. Yes. He's not only the number one free agent available this offseason, he's the best odds to win most valuable player. But those are the things that you have to do if you're going to be in that rarefied air. If he's ever going to be, I mean, he's in the conversation with Jordan. But if the court conversation, just like Michael Jordan, he changed how you looked at NBA players. Once he got the, those three championships, took that time off, ended up getting three more and the MVPs, it, it changed the way we evaluated Kobe. Changed the way we evaluate Le LeBron. If you go back to when LeBron's 16 years old, and I would have told you six or seven things about him, including multiple titles, multiple teams, took the worst team ever to the finals. His first game as a pro, as a baby, was a all-star line. Um, he is going to be the greatest statistical player ever. Oh, no, by the way, in year 16, he moves to the Lakers, and he's still the best player in the league. 
I think our expectations are sort of warped on him. I think we would have taken, we would have stopped at, he wins two team titles in Miami and one in Cleveland. You could just say, okay, he's every bit as good as we thought. The Hall had no other choice. I mean, would just to put his name with the rest of the guys? Because really what is a celebration, it's a celebration of football, but it's a celebration of the other players and executive Bobby Bethford. It's a celebration of their careers and the people that were important to them. So when you've decided that you're not going to come to the celebration, I don't know what, what other recourse that the Hall had. He didn't want to be a part of it. So now we want to include a player in something he wanted no parts of. So if, if it's his right to not come, and the, hey, he and I, we, we've talked about it. Mm-hmm. I disagree, and I told him I'm disappointed in it, but he said, Shannon, I'm comfortable with it. I trust trust me. I won't regret it. I said, okay, T.O., I hope you're right. Can't the Hall of Fame says, well, since you do not want to be here, we just going to honor and highlight the guys that are here? I don't really see the problem with that. T.O. and I. We're friends. I talked to him last week about it. And I told him my opinion, and I say it's my opinion, that he should go. And you know what? But Till's a grown man. You know, either way, I'm going to support my friend either way. Right. You know, I feel like that uh, this problem was started really by the sports writers. Mm -hmm. It really was. T.O. with no doubt was the first ballot Hall of Fame. I mean, it's no doubt he was. The bottom line, T.O. is, was, Eagles, Cowboys, Niners, needy. He needs constant affirmation. He seeks attention at every turn. You knew that going in, and you knew it before you voted him in. I don't have to love a player being needy, but he's human. But for an institution to be petty, you got to be above that. I don't think T.O. looks as bad as the Hall of Fame this weekend. He's the first of 310 who said no to the induction ceremony. And the Hall of Fame finally said, okay, if that's the way he wants to play it, then we're going to exclude him from our program. Right. It's not the end of the world, but it's it's Terrell to a T because I told you, he's not happy unless he's unhappy.